Hi friends, it's August. Thank you so much for being here and joining for this exciting video. I am so jazzed about this one. Valentine's Day is coming up soon and I'm sure we're all just getting a smattering of romance recommendations right now. Everyone wants to recommend some romance books, which I think is fantastic. But for those of us who don't want romance, we want stories that are a little bit different, but maybe they still have relationships in them. Maybe they still have love. And I was like, hey, Let's, let's pick up something different, a wide variety of genres and books and authors, and hopefully you all will have something new and something sounds interesting to you all. So I personally am not a romance genre reader. It's a genre that I've definitely dipped my toes into, I'm very curious about, I'm not opposed to it, but I just haven't had very much luck with finding good romance books. So I wanted to share a list of these wonderful books that are some of my favorite love stories of all time. So they feature love, but that's not the main premise of the book. The book has bigger adventures or more characters than just romance. Romance is like a subplot, but it adds so much to it because I personally love stories that have relationships in them. I love seeing characters and emotions and how they interact with others. I think it's so beautiful. I have eight books to share with you all and I kind of separated them into different like superlatives and categories so um, hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to do like you can skip to each one if you're interested but the first section is going to be like slow burn moody British atmospheric books <laughs> so those feature love. Uh, the next one is going to be love stories that have sapphic relationships, uh, gender fluid relationships, and they're more on like the genre bending fantasy-esque scale. But if you like horror and like steampunk Victorian vibes, stay tuned because that's those books. The next category is adventure, another like more like thriller genre bending self-discovery books. And the last category is going to be like true hitters of like just grief around relationships and sadness and how love can lead to sadness inevitably uh which one of is a memoir uh, and it revolves around a relationship so let's get started you all i'm so excited the first book that i want to share with you all is moon tiger by penelope lively i mean look at this cover I am just in love with this. I found this copy at a used library book sale many moons ago. <laughs> moons. This is definitely like a soft, slow, atmospheric book. It's so difficult to describe. It follows the main character, Claudia, as she is actually on her deathbed. She's an elderly woman, she's passing away, and she's recollecting her entire life from kind of start to finish. And in her mind, she's writing a history of the world. Like if she was able to write like a textbook on the history of the world, but the world is through her own personal history, her own recollections from childhood, from raising her family. And at the center of it all are these memories that she has of when she was a journalist in Egypt and she fell in love with a man of the like British army and he ended up being kind of like the one who got away this very sad relationship so this is just such a poetic again slow atmospheric almost like fragmented stories of one woman's life so it feels almost like a memoir but it's just so dreamy historical feeling so it's just a lot of like memories of love and loss and the trials and hardships of life but juxtaposed against the history of the world. So like the building of the pyramids and all these discoveries that humans have made in correspondence with her own life. Very difficult to describe, but this is just one of those books that's about mortality, recollections, memory, but it's just so soft and glittering. And it just personally made me feel like just so grateful to be alive and to have this life and understand the impact that our lives do have on the world. So that is the first book and it is Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. The next book we have is The Crimson Portrait by Jodi Shields. This is part of the soft slow British <laughs> uh, atmospheric superlative but this is historical fiction set in England in 1915 like during World War One. It follows this young woman who is husband just recently passed away as a soldier in the war so she's dealing with grief and at the same time her home her estate has been opened up as a field hospital for soldiers who have been wounded while she's through this grief she meets a soldier whose entire face is completely bandaged and covered because of the wounds that he's 
suffered from and she becomes just so attracted to him so this is definitely a very eerie kind of book because she starts to kind of almost believe or wish or want this soldier who she can never even see his face even though they're striking up a relationship in the back of her mind she's like this is like my husband this could be my husband who passed away he is set to have reconstructive surgery on his face and our protagonist is caught into this decision of like can I make him look like my dead husband <laughs> so this is like a love story of just like psychological horror the depths of our grief what we're willing to do to bring back the ones that we've lost do we let them go and bring a new love in or do we try and like make this new love something familiar into like our old love so this is just a very like psychologically chilling uh, historical fiction. I love the ambience if you like mansions and estates and stories of war and wartime love. It's a slow burn, it's very moody and atmospheric which I absolutely loved. So that is The Crimson Portrait by Jody Shields. Alright, the next superlative I'm going to be sharing with you all is like dark fantasy with love interests that come up that are sapphic gender fluid. The first one on that list is The Weaver by Emmy Atarenta. This is like a genre bending fantasy science fiction mystery thriller literary fiction um, and it's set in the most interesting world that I've ever read from. I personally am not a fantasy reader. I'm not a high fantasy person so if you're not even into fantasy I still highly recommend this book because it was just vibes. <laughs> just vibes. It is like an aquatic steampunk Victorian era world uh, where it's all set on this island. The women there are not allowed to learn how to read or write and it follows this young girl Eliana living in this like mansion on the sea in this house so kind of like dark academia vibes as well. An intruder comes in and she's this young girl and she's had her tongue cut out so she's not able to speak and she has the main character Eliana's name written on her hand. But none of the girls know what it says except for Eliana herself because she secretly taught herself how to read and write and things happen from there. Oh my gosh, I wish I could explain and like show you my mental images from reading this book and share it with you all. And romance, again, is just like this tiny little added bonus in here. This book was just absolutely fantastic. So uh, I hope I did an okay job explaining what this is, but it's a very difficult book to explain, but it, I highly, highly recommend it. It's so good. The next book that I want to share with you all is The Devour by Indra Das. This is unlike any other kind of book that I've read from either. I'm really really like kind of kicking myself that I got rid of this copy because it is such a unique read and I donated it way too soon right after finishing it and didn't think that I would want to keep a copy but I do and I regret it. Again this is a book that is dark fantasy as well as it includes a lot of aspects of like body horror. It's extremely strange and quirky but so beautiful and luscious where again the atmosphere is just really all engaging. So again I'm not a fan of fantasy. I'm, it's not really a genre that I've gotten into but I absolutely loved this book and I really appreciated what it did. This story follows a man in Calcutta, India. I believe it's in the early 1900s. I could be wrong though who is approached by a stranger and is given a bunch of parchments and old writings and texts and has said like, hey, I want you to transcribe this. And he and this other man just kind of embark on this relationship with each other where it's the stranger who's slowly giving information, is transcribing these documents and learning the history of, da da da, 17th century like werewolves okay but they're like really cool werewolves because they're really creepy fascinating and eerie and horrifying so they were this race of human that was similar to a werewolf in the 17th century in Mughal India it follows this tale of one of the werewolves who becomes attracted to a human woman and they kind of kind of get into some like trouble together and they're kind of on the run from the law and they're being tracked down but it's all through this like luscious tropical like jungle and landscape and atmosphere. The writing is really dark and scary. Again it does include some like body horror, some fight scenes that were really kind of gruesome, uh, but overall this book was just so enthralling and again the romance is just a small little bit of it, but what the romance is is very gender fluid as well as the love interests were of all sorts. It was just such an intriguing book, an intriguing story, really different than any other kind of book that I've read or anything kind of close to fantasy. So those are two of the fantasy recommendations that I have for you all. Again, I am not a fantasy reader, 
but I thoroughly enjoyed these stories. We are now entering the superlative of adventures and travel and like self-discovery now. So these are fictional stories that focus on self-discovery and kind of peeling back layers of understanding of main characters as well as the greater world they're in. The first one I want to share with you all is The Coincidence Makers by Yoav Bloom. This book, this book, while I was reading it, I was like, yo, we need to make this into a movie now. Like, where's Christopher Nolan? The writing in this was so cinematic. It immediately draws you in. It's so fast-paced and engaging and exciting. Suspenseful, thriller, another genre-bending book. It follows a department of coincidence makers and other departments in this like, like highly top secret agent kind of work is also the department of dreams, the department of imaginary friends. So it has kind of like a whimsical element, but it is so serious because it's like so top secret. But what these coincidence makers do is make coincidences where people knock over a coffee cup and then they bend down, pick up napkins, then the napkins then have something written on it. It's all these tiny little things that happen in our everyday lives that lead to something bigger. It's this chain event where they, they're supposed to meet someone that they fall in love with. They're supposed to realize their passion and their purpose for life, or they're supposed to realize that they hate their job and they need to leave it in order to move on to the next stage. So this book is extremely smart, very fast paced, and it follows three of the coincidence makers who work in this department. Each kind of chapter is from a different point of view, which I also really love too. It's just so fast paced. So one of our main characters who is a coincidence maker guy is given this top secret coincidence maker assignment and it is so dangerous and what consequently happens from that is that he and the rest of the coincidence makers kind of realize the importance and understand the power of like free will and fate and what love really is because they are kind of beyond humans and beyond human experiences so they get to kind of experience that from almost like a human level but again it's just love plays a Oh, such an interesting role in this at the end I was getting so emotional because it's one of those stories where like everything wraps up everything wraps up everything had a purpose in this book everything was telling a story that led to something bigger and greater and you're just like oh my gosh like it was just layers and layers of discovery and reveals and it just kept me on my toes and just truly a wonderful book I would absolutely love to see this made into a film so that is one for the adventures uh and yeah did i say already i got this one from dollar tree as well because i did <laughs> all right the next book in our adventurous self-discovery is hot house flower and the nine plants of desire by margot berwin uh i found this copy while i was traveling to like this little like coastal town in their used bookstore and it was just like such vibes it was in the summertime on the lake and like it was so nice so this is definitely a really wonderful summer spring read this is a contemporary kind of self-discovery book if you are a fan of plants uh travel adventure self-discovery and smut there is smut in here uh yes so not a romance book, but there's smut and I like it. <laughs> this book follows our main character, Lila, who lives in New York City and is grappling with the aftermath of like a really awful divorce. She's kind of lost herself, but then she stumbles upon this laundromat where in the back of it is just all of these exotic plants that are like very expensive. She then meets the owner of the laundromat and is kind of taught and put under his wing of like how to take care of plants. She then goes on this adventure of like taking care of her plants, which, you know, could just be a big old metaphor for like taking care of ourselves and healing ourselves and really like just self-love. But something happens and she ends up kind of realizing she needs to further prove herself in this world and taking plants and taking care of them seriously. So she travels to the Yucatan Peninsula to retrieve an exotic plant and in doing so she enters this world of like extremely dangerous but luscious rainforests jungles shamans and a sexy yucatan man <laughs> i'm sorry this is just so refreshing this is just an exhilarating book it's so refreshing if you like descriptions of plants and how to take care of them their medicinal properties if you are interested in just like really warm tropical luscious colors and this is such a juicy book to like sink your little fangs into. I do have to say I have not read this in quite a few years so 
hopefully my description is accurate and hopefully it stood the test of time so that is hot house flowers and the nine plants of desire by margot berwin okay friends we are now on to our last superlative which is gonna be hard hitting grief love sadness real raw stories about relationships the first one in that is going to be actually a memoir called where is the mango princess a journey back from brain injury by kathy crimmins <sighs> I learned so much about traumatic brain injuries or TBIs from this book. Overall story is from Kathy Crimmins. This is a memoir. Her husband suffers from a TBI and it's all about his road to recovery. But as a partner, as someone who's married to someone else, traumatic brain injuries almost turn you into a different person. You have to learn not only how to like read and write and walk again, but you also have to relearn social norms. Um, there are a lot of things in here where her husband who suffered from this traumatic brain injury is just so wildly inappropriate in public and can't take care of himself. She can't leave him alone and she has to take on this role as being a caregiver. So it's just a real raw take of real life and it's absolutely heartbreaking. And it's also about just kind of almost like losing the love of your life but they're still their physical body is still there so if you're just looking for a memoir that's really about like grief and partnership relationships uh, just kind of taking on these really daunting life challenges almost entirely by yourself uh, and if you want like a really sad book this is definitely it uh, Kathy Crimmins is a fantastic writer and there is a lot of humor in this as well if you're looking for a real real sad relationship kind of how do you get your partner back how do you cope with the fact that who you fell in love with and married is no longer there it's just that physically and they have almost an entirely new and different personality how do you navigate that so not only is this book completely informative but it's just also just really difficult to read and really sad so that is where is the mango princess i found this copy at one of my local thrift stores um and I'm really happy that I did. Okay friends, this is the last book that I'll be recommending for you all. This is another just like sad <laughs> collection of just sadness and that is The Feast of Love by Charles Baxter. I mean this copy is just so gorgeous. Look at that blue. I can't get over how gorgeous this blue is. This is a color that I just want to eat all the time. Like I just want to eat it. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? So I actually originally read this book because my dad had a copy of it in his bookshelf and I was just scouring it one day and was like, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. But then I actually found this hardback copy used at Goodwill and I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I loved this book. This had one of those quotes where it's just like really short, but it just stuck with me and it is, you'll have your heart cut out with a grapefruit knife. So if you like that one specific quote that has just always stuck with me, then that came from this book. So this is like a contemporary vignette all about a town which actually takes place in Michigan. It's in Ann Arbor, hey -o. And this community's like inner lives. So, you know, when you're walking down the street or you're driving and you realize everyone else around you has a life similar to your own where they've cried and they have things to do and they've fallen in love and have friendships ruined and all that stuff. This is basically that. It's all vignettes of different people's life in this one kind of area. But it's a reimagined telling of Midsummer Night's Dream. And so it tells these tales of people in love and loss with family and children, school, work, obligations, just real, real life stuff. It's definitely sad and some of the stories just feel so ordinary. It feels like it's something that could happen to you or to your family or your friends. This is just very moving. There are definitely some stories. They're not even necessarily short stories. They all kind of end up connecting if I remember correctly. Again, this is another book that I haven't read in quite a long time, but I remember just being so upset about it because I was like, it was too real where things happened that was just so unfair and unexpected. So definitely be on the lookout for like just sadness and things happening that are just tragic. This is just another one of those books that has like a feeling of like a charcuterie board. Like here is a feast and here are all these different flavors and things to snack on and different stories and it's just such a wide variety and collection but it all fits together. It all goes so well together. <laughs> So that is The Feast of Love by Charles Baxter. So there we have it, my beautiful friends. These are the seven out of the eight books that I recommended for you all. All of these are truly wonderful stories, have such wonderful characters, adventures, writing, storytelling, everything. 
that just includes a little bit of romance and relationships and realness to hopefully satisfy some of your little cravings for having a relationship in stories without it all being a romance book. That's not the sole plot of these stories. They are love stories. They do truly focus on love and human experiences and the trials of life. But through life, we also experience love. And I wish there was kind of a category for that, honestly, because it's love stories, life stories, but not love romance stories, you know what I'm saying? So if you have any ideas of what we can call this genre, let's just make one up ourselves right now. Let's do it. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas on it. And if you have any recommendations of books that also include a relationship that just really stuck out to you and you really loved, I would love to hear your recommendations. I'm actually currently reading one right now that could definitely be added on here, but I want to finish it first before fully giving you a recommendation on it. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. If you're going to curl up with a wonderful book, let me know what book you're going to be reading for this uh, holiday. <laughs> if you have any plans for the weekend. Thank you all so much again for watching. I would love to hear if you've read these before, if you have any further recommendations down below. I will see you all again very soon. Bye!